Let's continue our discussion about physiology and today's topic is vesicular transport or literally how your cell eats. So let's get started. We'll talk about cell membrane transport in detail later but for now remember you have two types. You have passive called diffusion which doesn't require ATP or active which requires ATP. So active has the carrier active transport and the vesicular active transport. So the vesicular transport, which is today's topic, is an active transport. It requires ATP and it has two types, endocytosis, getting nutrients and substance into the cell or exocytosis, getting substances out of the cell. Exo, exit. So how does your freaking cell get nutrients? and water. Let's talk about water first. Water is king. It can pass slowly through the lipid boiler. But you have told us before that like fat and water don't mix. Yes, I was joking. They can mix, okay, uh, under very like certain conditions and it's a very slow process. Or they can pass quickly through aquaporin channels. Aqua means water, porin is a pore or a channel. Water soluble molecules, which are soluble in water, such as the electrolytes, for example, the sodium, the chloride, etc., they pass through channels. Lipid and lipid soluble molecules, they pass through the cell membrane matrix because the cell membrane is a lipid membrane. What are the lipid soluble molecules? You have carbon dioxide, you have oxygen, and you have alcohol. Then let's talk about the macromolecules. They need vesicular transport. If they are relatively small, it's called pinocytosis. If they are relatively large, called large particles, we need phagocytosis. This is passive transport, which means doesn't require energy, and this is active transport. It does require energy. So, vesicular transport, a subtype of active transport, requires energy. Definition is the transport of macromolecules across plasma membrane. Remember? macromolecules. Two types, endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis coming into the cell, exocytosis going outside of the cell. Two types of endocytosis. We have the pinocytosis or pinocytosis, whatever you want to call it. And this is also known as cell drinking. It's not actually drinking, it's cell, still eating, but eating very, very, very teeny tiny compartment that we cannot see on light microscopy. So it's as if the cell is drinking them or phagocytosis for larger particles, and this is called cell eating. Quick note, how do you think your thyroid gland secretes thyroxine? Answer, by exocytosis. Let's compare between pinocytosis and phagocytosis. Pinocytosis, cell drinking, smaller macromolecules. Phagocytosis, cell eating, larger macromolecules, also known as particles. This process, or these molecules are not seen on light microscopy, these big particles of course are seen on light microscopy. Pinocytosis, the substances are in a solution, they are dissolved, okay, like salt in water. And here the substances are not in solution. Pinocytosis example, proteins. How do you think your cell get proteins in? By pinocytosis, vitamin B12, glycoproteins. On the other hand, phagocytosis for larger things, for bacteria for whole cells, for degenerating tissue, for dead tissue, etc. Who performs pinocytosis? Answer, all cell. Who performs phagocytosis? Only certain cells called phagocytic cells, such as some of your leukocytes, which are your white blood cells, and the macrophages, which are the monocytes in the tissue. Mechanism of pinocytosis. Let's say that this is the cell and the cell today is going to eat protein through the process of pinocytosis. This protein, as you know, is globular, as I've told you in a previous lecture. And the receptor is a protein, so it's also globular. Proteins is attached to the cell receptor. Fine. Here we have this part. It's called the coated pit to be able to receive the protein. Here we have a different type of protein called clathrin. Clathrin is a protein in the cell and it will help us engulf this protein inside. Okay, let's go to the second step. 
We have actin and myosin, which are also proteins, and we need calcium for contraction. They're gonna contract, contract around the protein and the receptor. Now, clathrin is getting all of these proteins to the inside of the cell away from the surface. Thank you, clathrin, for your job. Now you can undergo dissolution. Go to hell. We call this penocytotic vesicle. That's why today's lesson is vesicular transport. Let's talk about mechanism of phagocytosis. Same thing, except instead of eating small particles such as protein, let's eat whole cells or bacteria, something big. So this cell is not any cell, it's likely a macrophage or a white blood cell. And this is a bacteria and this is the IgG antibody, a process called opsonization. We're gonna talk about this when we talk about immunology. And we need C3B. C3B and IgG are also known as opsonins, which are proteins for opsonization. Opsonization means making the bacteria tasty for the white blood cell to engulf. Wonderful. The bacteria, antibody, receptor. Second step, same thing. Actinomycin, contract. And then clathrin brings them in, in a, not penocytic, phago phagocytotic vesicle. Clathrin, go to hell. Again, phagocytosis, let's suppose that this is a bacteria. So first we form a pit, then we engulf the bacteria, forming a vesicle, then the lysosome comes and destroys this vesicle. This is called phagolysosome. Very nice. So digestion occurs. Some of these particles are digestible, others are not digestible, they form a residual body that's going to exit the cell through exocytosis. Exocytosis is the exact opposite of endocytosis and the exact same steps, but in reverse. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.